I just bought the cheapest Cessna 421C in the world, but it has a huge repair bill. That is just the initial estimate for repair on this thing. Frankly, it seemed a little too nice for Jimmy's world, but we're moving up in the world. You know what I'm saying? The 421 has long been my dream airplane. I have been saving up for years and hunting for years to find just the right one. I started with this little airplane, a Cherokee 180, sold it to get into a bigger airplane, realized it was way too slow, and then got into even a bigger airplane with more engines, and then sold and traded for the 310, and then sold and traded for the Lance Air, and now it's time for me to sell both of those and trade up to the big daddy, the 421C. I can finally take all of my family on a trip at the same time in an airplane. It is such a blessing to be able to share this adventure with you, so thank you so much. If you haven't already, subscribe, like, do the YouTube thing so we can share this adventure with more people. This airplane is special because it has enough seats, it has enough fuel to get the distance that we need to go, and most importantly, it has a bathroom on board. It's a little bucket, but it still counts as a bathroom. That way, when the little kids and the other people need to go potty, we can just keep on flying and they can do their business so we can make the trips much, much faster without stopping every two hours. I've been hunting for the perfect 421 for a long time. However, a good one is really expensive. I could buy a cheaper one like these projects. However, I did the math and by the time I fix it up, I'd actually have more money into it than if I just saved up and bought one that was all ready to go. On March 11th, which ironically was the same date I was trying to get the 310 up to TAS because I had a gear issue, they had one there that I had been trying to put an offer in, trying to make a deal with. The same day I was talking to them about the gear issue, I got news of this. Any latest status on the potential airplane acquisition. Okay. So it turns out, I think I may have actually bought that airplane. The Cessna 421 Golden Eagle is a seven seat twin engine airplane developed in the 60s. The 421C has a new wing with no gas tanks out on the tips and a new landing gear a hydraulic landing gear, not the troublesome electromechanical landing gear that I had issues with. Sports a couple of 375 horsepower Continental geared turbo intercooled engines on each side that suck down about 50 gallons an hour, which is a lot of fuel. Maximum speed on this is 256 knots, which is maximum speed. Maximum cruising speed is 240 knots at 20,000 feet. That's awesome. The maximum speed on this is more than our little hot rod behind me at 240 knots. And at 20,000 feet up, this thing we can only go to about 10,000 feet, but that one will go way higher and way faster and carry a lot more stuff and also drink a lot more fuel and cost a heck of a lot more to maintain and operate and to purchase. That's why I have to sell it. I just found out that we're gonna be doing a live auction party. So on May 18th, when that auction ends, we're gonna be live in a studio in Texas watching the end of the auction to see and to congratulate whoever the winner is. Thank you, Airspace Auctions and Aeroverse, cause that's where it's gonna be. It's a platform dedicated to aviation and aviation enthusiast aeroverse we'll put the description down there sign up it'll be free for everybody to watch i hope to see you there can i get a clear prep we got the 310 all fixed up flew it up there weather was perfect the airplane worked perfect it was really cold the last hour though okay i don't know if you can see this 
I can very clearly see my breath. And we made it. The reason you're not seeing the full flight is because it was boring. Nothing happened on that trip. That just flew as smooth and as nice as could be. And now we can check out the 421, which I have actually never seen even a picture of until now. I'm here at TAS in Defiance, Ohio. They specialize in twin Cessnas. That's all they do. And that's why the 310 is here because they're gonna check it out. They're the number one shop in the world. Coming in, they just pulled that one in. That's a fancy one. It's another 421, fancy, ooh, with some winglets and such. Okay, I'm looking for an airplane just like this, 421 Kilo Mike. That's a 340. See those tip tanks right there belong to a 310. There's another 310 back there. What's back there? There's another, so they got three 310s. Something back there. Okay. Ooh, look, this is a heater. This is what I wish that was working on my 310, so I wouldn't have froze to death. Okay, here's a 421. Okay, let's see, is this it? Paint a little different, 71 Lima Romeo. No, that's not it. So I think the only option is it must be this one back here. Okay, this is a 421. It looks like it could be it. We got blue. Uh, 421 Kilo Mike. Okay, yep, yeah, this is it. So let's just take a look back and get a look at the old girl. Wow, that's, that's nice. I noticed this, winglets. That's cool, it was not on the pictures though. Those pictures were for 2017, so sometime between 2017 and now, I guess they put winglets on it. That's cool, I'll take it. Makes it go faster, climb better, you know, all the fancy stuff. Got hubcaps on it, also makes it go a little faster. One weird quirk about this are these uh, hubcaps, and you may be wondering why does it matter if an airplane has hubcaps? And yes, these hubcaps actually make it go faster because this airplane got rid of the inner door over there so that that wheel is showing whenever you're flying. So because they put the cap on there, it makes it smoother under the wing. That's cool. It's got all the speed mods on it. The wing things out there are supposed to give it another five knots. The strakes in the back are supposed to give it another five knots. These things right here, probably a couple knots. And, uh, I don't know, there's probably other stuff on here that I haven't yet to find yet. So let these boys do their work and then we'll come back when they're further along or maybe when it's ready to pick up because yes, I actually have to do some training because this airplane is so much more complicated than anything else that I've flown. You know, I probably should have used the buyer's checklist that CessnaFlyer.org has for free they're the experts in these Cessna twins, and TAS is the people who run the twin Cessna flyer organization. They offer a ton of stuff for free, and one is a buyer's checklist that I probably should have used. This is an engine, 375 horsepower, Continental 520 turbo right here, and it has basically a transmission right here, and these propellers sick seven and a half feet from the top to the bottom is how big of an area that sucker goes. It's just nuts. And they're Ram engines, which are fantastic. So should have stronger case on there, have lesser problems, last longer. Okay, it looks like an engine. Brown hoses are good. That's all part of that Ram, which makes things last longer. Exhaust, so we'll come back. So let me go show you the uh, repair estimate, but this exhaust right here, Put in the comments, how much do you think it is for both engines to comply with what's called an airworthiness directive on this exhaust? Just go ahead and have some fun. Put it in the comments. You just let me know what you think. Alternator. And this also has what's called flight into known ice, which is another reason I got the C model because these de-ice boots, it's got more de-icing back there, back there, has a heated front windshield up there and also has your propeller de-ice stuff as well so that you can you know if you're going into bad weather and it's cold like it is outside you can make it through safely a monster nose compartment on this thing it's over six feet long inside here oh there's the heater right there 
this is also on the repair list and we'll come back to that too. How much do you think to just do a check on a heater? This one, they said it was working fine, nothing wrong with it, but it's been over 10 years since it's had a check and throw in the comments, how much do you think it is just to do a check on that heater? I don't know what that is, why it's all just siliconed. I have no idea what that's about. Let's just look at it. Paint overall seems to be okay. Engines, mid-time engines, they look all right. Here's the other engine. Same, same story as the other side. I'm still a little confused by the winglets. I mean, I like them. I do. They're pretty cool and they do a lot of good stuff, but I was not on the pictures. I, I was not expecting that. Inside, of course, it's all taken out like that. Look at the tail back there. What? It's got strakes on it like a Learjet. Okay, those are not on the pictures either. I wonder if they were done the same time as the winglets. Well, that's cool. Again, you know, the paint on it actually looks pretty stinking good. And I'm not seeing a lot of corrosion. So my understanding is this airplane has been all the way around the world. It used to live in Australia and then Singapore, and then it was in Hawaii and then Texas and then California. Now it's gonna be in Florida, apparently. Emergency exit. Let's make sure all the bolts are on there so our emergency exit door doesn't fall off. <coughs> Boeing. All right, let's go inside and check her out. Not gonna see a whole lot inside because all the interior is taken out, but let's just see what we got. You know, this, this looks pretty good. Smells nice, smells like leather in here, that's nice. Panels are nice. It's even got privacy curtain. Okay, so I'm gonna ramp for just a second. You see that little tinted visor right there? This thing? Yeah. You have to have a full FAA certified STC and all kinds of other crazy stuff just to have this in the airplane. Isn't that silly and ridiculous on some of the level of things that, <sighs> okay. But it's got them and those are fantastic. Dude, this is an awesome airplane. It's got a little bit of a work order. And I was just told that they found a fairly significant issue that is not fully accounted for on that work order, which is gonna make it way more than the $90,000 that's already quoted. So Jimmy, why in the world are you buying such an expensive airplane, especially one that's got some known issues because of the Bahama trip, if I'm honest. The 310, four people max, and it doesn't have autopilot in it, doesn't have a heater. Uh, it just doesn't, I can't do much with it outside of local stuff in nicer weather. This airplane allows me to go pretty much any time of the year all around the world. Yep. So we're going to see if we can't take some longer trips. And we're starting with the Bahama trip. You guys already know about it. We're giving away a trip to the Bahamas. We're going to be flying there with 40 other airplanes. May 9th through the 13th. Go to save310.com, get the full details there. You can win a trip or you can just sign up directly with the Bahama people and pay and make sure you're going if you've got your own airplane and all that kind of stuff. So I look forward to seeing you there. We still have some more stuff to check out. Let's finally, let's just take a look at this repair bill. It's insane. Here is page one of the repair bill. Here is the rest of it. going 24 pages of notes and discrepancies and repair and stuff let me zoom in on this little bit right here that is just the initial estimate for repair on this thing yeah yeah it's a lot however there's nothing major in this repair you got a couple of really expensive things how much did you think it was on that exhaust over there $30,000, that's how much it is. Every 12 years, just to keep it legal and safe, they don't put the stuff in there just because, but it's $30,000 every 12 years you have to spend just on that exhaust piece right there. The heater issue, what was your guess? At least $10,000 just to do that overhaul, and they have to be overhauled every 10 years. Yeah, that's nuts. 
Although I think I would have paid that on my trip here to have a working heater, if I'm honest with you. So that's the cost of having really expensive airplanes. Now, one thing that does concern me is this piece of metal that's sitting on the wing right here. Um, let me let me just show you what we're talking about. Let's take a look inside here. What we got? Oh, oh, that one's fancy. It's got the shock on it. Wow. Hydraulic right here for the gears and all that stuff. That is a nitrogen bottle for the emergency blowdown. You got your gauge there to see if it's good to go. And then there should be, there it is right there. There's your oxygen bottle, your 11 pound oxygen, emergency breathing air oxygen. Look at the size of this. It is over six feet long. And you can fit a bunch of baggage up here. Back here, you can fit 331 pounds just in this area here, minus out some of the other stuff. So there's weight there. And then 160 pounds up front, minus avionics and stuff like that. And I think the radar is what you can see through that hole right there. I think that's the back of the, the radar dome thing that's up here that sends out stuff for your radar inside. You know what I haven't seen is any of the seats. What is, oh yeah, there you go. Hey, those look pretty good. These right here are the pilot and co-pilot seat. Don't know how much we're gonna be able to see of those. Nice lamb's wool seating right there. Carpet looks like it needs to be cleaned pretty good, but I mean, shoot the seats. Oh yeah, smells nice leather. Fantastic. That definitely needs to be clean. Oh, here we go. Let's see, fuel tester thing. Do not tow, gust lock on, it goes in the back. Glass cleaner, sweet and spicy, caffeine free, good earth something. And her books, pilot operating handbook. Cool. I just noticed something as I was grabbing the camera that I didn't realize that is super cool. And it's this little white patch right here, which is pretty much impossible to see on camera. Oh, there it goes, right here. This little thing right here. These are spoilers. When you hit a button inside there, they go whoop, they're little flaps that come up so you can slow down on your descent from really high altitudes without changing the power settings, which on these engines hurt the engines. So this airplane is loaded. It's got, which I didn't realize, these winglets right here behind me. It's got, uh, kind of hard to see there. Well, the the strakes behind there under the tail, it's got those, which are really cool. It's got the spoilers on it. And then I, yeah, I saw the little, what's called micro vortice uh, VGs on this part. I don't see them on the rest of the wing out there, which I'll just have to figure out which one it is. Paint's good on it. The engines are good. The interior is nice. Avionics are a little older, dated, but nothing we can't update fairly easily. They've already done the full inspection on it. They did find a few things. I've already talked about those major things. Uh, this right here, I don't know what that is. So I'm gonna have to get Tony over here to talk to me about what that is. And Tony, by the way, super, he's a legend. He is the guy that started this and uh, he actually advises the FAA on twin Cessnas. You're gonna love what they started with. They started with an old straight tail 310 to get the uh, twin Cessna flyer whole thing for all the owners and operators, mechanics, and everybody else that's even around these airplanes. So they know all the little deals with all the nuances of these airplanes. And he just happened to print me up the very first ever article. And it was from 1989, number one. Look at that. That's pretty neat. And I got a lot of information off of the, the website there. A lot of it's for free, the gear rigging stuff and all that. And then you can pay for the memberships and the, it's a pretty cool organization. I uh, am now a member of it. And we're actually gonna be starting to do more stuff with them because of this airplane and all of the, just the neat stuff about flying a twin engine and how many more doors it opens up in the aviation world. I have been a member of Twin Cessna Flyer since 2021. Best money I've ever spent. They have a huge amount of resources. You have a Twin Cessna or Twin Engine Airplane, you go check out twincessna.org. You'll be glad you did. Well, let's go find Tony and find out what the heck that 
corroded piece of metal is about because that looks expensive. All right, so this is Tony. He is the uh, the main guy here behind all this and the legend, the myth. That's Tony. Tony, walk us through. Uh, I noticed uh, we had uh, some corrosion stuff over there, but walk us through what we, what you guys found. Well, we were doing an annual inspection on the airplane, and uh, which was going to transition into a pre-buy evaluation uh, for prospective uh, new buyer because the owner was selling it, uh, the airplane in between, as in conjunction with uh, doing the annual inspection. This aircraft is 421, has a secondary fuel system and a fuel tank in it, as a long range tank that's added and it's into the engine nacelle, kind of mounted behind the engine area. So, that, so that's it sets back cool. here, yeah. So it sits in this area, and right. this is the fuel tank itself right here, correct? That's the fuel tank out of that okay. wing, yes. So that goes inside in, this area. Inside this here. area in here, okay? And it adds an additional 26 gallon of fuel back here. The fuel then is transferred from this tank into the wings where then it's used to the engine. This Tony guy is so stinking smart. The location of this tank and the construction of this tank we found in the past has a real problem with getting corrosion into the structure around it. A whole lot of really bad things happen in this area. Uh, first of all, the tank construction, if you wanna look at it, this is a, a rubber bladder oh, weird. inside of it. And then to protect it from heat and the environment and give it some kind of structure so it doesn't just collapse when it's sitting in there. They stick it inside of a stainless steel box assembly. And then they coated this box with some type of like insulation material in it. And they sprayed some of it on. Some of it are panels that kind of like drop in around it and so on. But over the years, what we find is that this holds moisture and it also releases some type of chemical, which I think is probably like probably chlorine-like chemical, and it will get into the aluminum structure around it and cause other corrosion around it. So if we look, here's one of the straps, you yeah, can see some of the aluminum this, right there. That's, yep, right? uh-huh, yep. Yeah, here we go, see some of that. And some of it in there. Oh yeah, so any moisture that gets in between there gets mm -hmm. stuck, and then moisture, of course, causes corrosion. Yeah. So the big problem is, is for us in the maintenance field, inspection field, is that this is all enclosed, so without doing an awful lot of work, you can't see it. So there's no, it looks perfect from the outside until you get down inside of it and no one's really tearing it apart enough to be able to get down inside and look at it if they don't know what the issues are. So is there a specific time, how far you're supposed to check on that corrosion? Not, not really, no. Cessna never set up a time limitation on it. Uh, it's just an area where you, it says inspect generally for condition. Yeah. And you your condition and my condition and somebody else's condition is all kind of different on how, you, how extensive you get in and find it. Now, our advantage has been that these are, these are not in every airplane. They're in some as an option, and but they're in different models of airplanes. So the Cessna 421, the 414, the Cessna 340, the Cessna 310R series airplanes have this kind of tank as an option in it. And we have found uh, some heavy corrosion in the airplane sporadically over the last 10 years. And we found like three pretty heavily corroded ones in the last, since the first of the year, actually. Oh, wow. So it's pretty prevalent now because the airplanes are getting old. So, and one of the big things that propagates this kind of problem is ha repainting the airplane. And when they strip the paint, the water and stripper stuff gets down in around the crevices of things, gets down into this, soaks it, and we'll look in a little bit, I'll show you where it actually, you can see where the stripper and water has gotten down into it, and it attacks this stuff, which is causing the 
corrosion to happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. Well, let's go back and yeah. let's take a look. Do you so, want me to grab one side of it? No, I can get a hold of it. So this cover here does come off, but it takes a lot of work. It's like, this is the firewall. Another problem here is a lot of the heat. This is a firewall. This is only 16,000 stainless steel. And this is the turbocharger here. And it can, housing can run as high as 1600 degrees and or more. And it separates that from that tank. The hottest part of the hottest part of the airplane from a fuel tank mm -hmm. is a 16,000 piece of stainless steel. Right, it protects it in between. And uh, so to get into that tank, you have to kind of remove part of the tank and then you can remove the cover in it. And what you'll find in this cover underneath is that that, that tank will be in there then inside of this cavity. So it fits. This area in here has this piece, which we've already started taking out, but th there's a lot more of these pieces that if you can see, oh, wow. yeah, yeah. see what like the structure is like in here. Now we've tore this up some getting it out because it's just so flimsy and everything, but you can see the kinds of corrosion that are on the inside of it. And so that, hmm. I mean, yeah, you can, you can just practically put your hand through that. Yeah, well, they were, there were holes in this. And here as well, you can see this corrosion. This was should this should be solid aluminum stuff. And you can see that it's just, it's, it's just dust. Like yeah. And it's gone. Yeah, it's, it's like gone. like the back of the Elvis jet. Yes. And then, and then you'll have other areas of corrosion in it. These are, this is the top wing skin. This is the important, starts to become the important part. And so that would be areas that in most likely this area in here can be cleaned. We can stop it where it's at. You can take and clean this on the surface. A material like this, we can clean like about 10% of the thickness in it and then treat it and not have to really do anything structural. But the really scary part is that here at this location, Underneath is the main spar of the wing. Mm. So this is the part that's like the main bridge of this wing that holds the entire wing and the engine and everything on. And if it gets corrosion into here, it's horribly expensive to repair. So we wanted to get it stopped in here before it got to that. So we're gonna be doing some more removal here and picking this up and we get inside and we'll clean this underneath and we'll clean these skins if possible. We've had to come in before and take these plates off here. These structural plates, you can see, they hold the engine in. We've had to take this skin in here loose and completely remove it and put it in. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have to go that deep in this, this but right now, it's important to get it stopped now and not have to go that much, not let it continue so it goes on that far. People ask, well, how much is too much corrosion? And, any. you know, yeah, any kind of, yeah. Um, especially in these structural members. Obviously, Cessna didn't design it to take the stresses that it's required to take with factoring in corrosion. They didn't, that wasn't part of the, part of the deal when they designed it. They, uh, uh, we don't have a lot to go on here because we have to just rely on Cessna's original engineering in the airplane, which is bring it back to its proper condition. Okay, that's not the best thing in the world, but this is the worst that we found on the airplane. I can live with that. You can see this firewall is just, is really kind of like just a, yeah. A stainless steel blocking is not very little, thick, yeah. With a little bit, there? with it's just this heat treat material kind of like just kind of like stuck on it. Now when we're done here with all this, we'll go back in and put a newer style, a firewall sealant that'll go to 5,000 degrees and we'll trial that onto this material. And, it, and it's not, uh, it, it doesn't uh, react with moisture like this. Oh, and wow. it, We've got a lot of new materials that is really excellent compared to what they had back in the mid-70s. 
overall, uh, I don't know if you inspected this airplane or looked at it at all. Do you have any opinion on this airplane overall? Solid airplane? Need some love? Complete piece of junk? No, it's, a, it, it's good. It's a good solid airplane. Um, it, it doesn't have anything that every other airplane could possibly have in it that, that's this vintage. I tell people a lot of times that, you know, we're really not in the mode of maintenance on the airplane. We're now today in the mode of restoration on these airplanes. These are true up and up antiques. And so you're not an owner, you're the caretaker of this airplane <laughs> at this point. Job. So uh, it is something that has gotten more prevalent. The, re the reason that this makes these airplanes make sense is that the value has come down enough in it that we can buy them at a purchase price that's maybe a tenth or less of what a new airplane would be. And even if it seems expensive to maintain per year, that's substantially less than what it would be to buy a new aircraft today. And on, uh, for us, there's not really any new airplanes being built that are in this category of airplane. They're just not available in a new condition at all. So it's gonna keep them viable for a long time, even though that they may, quote, seemingly take a lot of money for the maintenance on the airplane. We need to pay attention to this kind of stuff, things that we've learned over the years uh, corrosion, uh, it's much easier to fix corrosion when it's a three or four hour job to clean it up and treat it than it is to wait another eight or 10 years and then spend hundreds and hundreds of hours trying to replace sections of, of the airplane because the corrosion has ate it completely up. Um, Fantastic. All right. Tony, any uh, wise words uh, for anybody looking to buy a twin Cessna airplane? Have somebody that knows what they're doing do a pre-buy evaluation to begin with on it. Don't forget to look for it. I just had a phone conversation with somebody that had put some money down on an airplane that was in uh, up in the Dakotas, twin. They, their statement was that, well, it's not doesn't have any corrosion in it because it's up in dry country. It's always been up here in the Dakota area or Montana areas. When they got to started looking at it, the wing was corroded completely almost in two in it. And so they, he backed out, got, luckily he was within a day of spending his money on the airplane and he backed out of it and got away, got away from it. But it, all of them are, could have corrosion for some reason or other in it. And corrosion's our biggest enemy. The engine stuff, yeah, it's expensive, it's in kind of important, but we can fix the engine pretty easy. All I gotta do is make a phone call and you can get a new rebuilt engine, pretty much all of them. So that's not where we wanna put our focus very much. We wanna look and make sure that the airframe that we're putting that engine on is in good condition in it. Frankly, it seems a little too nice for Jimmy's world. But we're moving up in the world. You know what I'm saying? Put in the comments, let me know. Do you think this was a good purchase or not? Has to be a lot better value than the Elvis jet, but we'll see. Now we got to fly back down, go check on the other airplanes, do some more work on the Elvis jet, and they're going to give us a call when this thing and the 310, they haven't even opened up the 310 yet, the Silver Bullet, find out what they find out there before we can have the auction go live in May on the 310 and the Lance Air. See you next time. I want to give a huge shout out to Twin Cessna Flyer, twincessna.org, the great organization. They got a huge amount of resources here. Just go check them out. It is a fantastic group of people that have helped me so much already with the 310 and soon to be this airplane that I just bought, a 421. That's right, a 421 the big daddy of all twin Cessnas. I just realized I haven't looked in this locker. Wow. This is always a good sign. Oh, there's the tire truck. Yeah. There you go. Pilot only to close baggage door. So that you don't break it because on these you have to push that in order to close it. Oh, and lock it down. Nice. This is a fantastic family hauler. Yes. If you like this video, 
You're gonna love that video and make sure you're subscribed by clicking down here.